one of the drills that we do that is because I see so many players that swing the racket and when they hit the serve, they're facing the net and they're coming around like this, right? So if you watch Pete Sampras, when he makes contact, what does his body look like when he makes contact? His body. Say it. Still turned. Still turned, right? What else? Anything else? He makes contact with his hand. He's fully extended. Yeah, he's, he's, he's in this type of position right here, right? And most people are here, right? So the dirty diaper starts to teach people how the body is supposed to feel at contact and even after contact. So when you feel rather than racket head speed first. Pretty easy, right? Just nice and easy. Just feel like you're just tapping the ball. If you want to learn ball control before you learn racket head speed. Go ahead. dollars if you finish like that. Hand towards you. A million dollars. I don't care if the ball goes there, there. Well, I do care if it hits someone. But, okay? A million dollars. Toss way over the head. <laughs> At the end, that's your goal. I'll give it one more try and then we're moving on. Awesome. There you go. Better. Closer. Yeah. Now, there, now we want this to bend, and I want it to tilt forward, tilt forward a little bit more. Okay, another way you guys can do it, both knees down or front knee forward, this knee back. You just feel stable. Good. So he's got some work to do, right? He's got some work to do to get the ball over to learn how to work on hitting up on it, right? So I still struggle a little bit. I come down and do it myself. Okay? We don't need those balls, right? Oh. Now, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to do it more. Okay? Toss over here. Okay, so toss wasn't in the right place. So we got to work to get the toss in the right place. Here's the one. <laughs> oh, that was really good. I tried it then. Because he over exaggerated. Oh. So I don't want him to make the same mistake ten times in a row. I actually want him. I want him to hit it. You know, over there. It's fine. Because we have to train the brain and the body to do something different. It's over the fence, right? One more. Exaggerate. Pretty good. So we're going to move on from there, but you guys get the idea. So normally, in a lesson, I put a student down. They have their homework, right, for the week. they got to do that drill for the week on their own. There's no reason why they can't practice that on their own. So get on your knees. Now, your goal, your goal is to finish with the string spacing. and stay with that concept. Yep. Pretty good. Pretty good. Freeze at the end for me. Freeze. <laughs> <laughs> that feeling right there, right? The Pete Sampras feeling. Okay. You got a question? Hey Jeff, what kind of grip would they use? You know, with this grip, when, especially if you're doing, you can actually can you stand up here? When you're doing a dirty diaper where pronation is not the focus, you can actually, you can use anywhere from a continental even to a weak continental, weak would be more towards the forehand a little bit. Or to really get it, you can move it even towards the backhand. You know, like second, really extreme second serve grip. So, so I choke up. That makes it easier for the strings to face. If my grip is more closer to a weak continental, you're not going to see it as pronounced. So if you can get it towards a, more towards the backhand, more second serve type grip. I mean, there are variations with grips. You know. Different grips. So the way here, instead of you rotate too early. So I believe that if you create a really strong body that's really stable, 
then the arm just the arm just does the work if the body is stable. Same concept if Nadal's running for a wide backhand. Right? When you see him get a wide backhand, what's his body doing when he's making contact? It's like it's like so stable, there's no rotation. When I was playing on the tour, I had a crappy backhand. Richard Schmidt can attest to that. Um, when I would go out wide, my move is like this. It's I call it the inner mountain backhand. <laughs> Denver, Colorado, altitude backhand, right? The doll, when he runs over and hits the backhand, he's like this. So his body is like a straight pillar. That's, that's what I want people to feel on the surf. I want them to hit a surf and feel this instead of this. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, next, from the knees, what we can do... Oh, another, another classic problem that I see when we do this, when they're first learning, is they're going to swing. If it tosses them in the right place, they're going to swing and the racket goes down and hits the ground. Another sure sign the toss wasn't in the right place before it tops the curve. Okay? And good. See that? Relaxation. And was that easier to get the string scores? It's, it's, it's in a pretty good position, right? It can't it can't go anywhere else. If my toss goes higher, it can go a lot of different funky places. Okay? I think the biggest reason why his arm is going up Up together, right? Down together, up together. Don't admit it now if you've ever taught that before, okay? <laughs> okay. Three-quarters serve. I put the racket right here, okay? I put the racket here. The strings face the front knee, okay? Obviously, it depends on grip. If it's a backhand grip, it's here. If it's more of a continental, it's going to maybe face towards the back, and the back knee, okay? If I want to change that rhythm, I get them to lead with the tossing hand first, and then this arm's going to come up. So they toss, and then it comes up. So that's what we're going to try with Justin right now, who has the half serve. We're going to see, I'll have students, as soon as I, okay, if I put them here, their motion gets literally 100% better. As soon as I go back to here, they're back into here again. So this little drill right here is magic. Have your players do this in a tournament for months until they understand how to wait. Okay, so you ready to try that? Okay. It's like, oh, okay. okay. So we're gonna try that. We're gonna three quarter surf. And we're gonna see what happens to his motion. You're gonna face this way. So. Yeah. Yeah. So the racket stays here, and then we don't want it locked out. So we want the arm just relaxed, right? It's a little slight bend, wrist relaxed. Now you have to feel like you're gonna leave here before this arm can move. Yes. Yes. Just go. Let's see how it looks, guys. How it looks. Oh, yes. Nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. One serve. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> I got the side. Oh, oh, see what he did? Yeah. <laughs> so, so as soon as he goes there, he's going to go to his old pattern. He's going to go here. We're going to keep it right here, and he has to hold it, and it's going to lead. And now we're Pete Sampras. Hold it. Okay. Now, he didn't hit it clean, but again, it doesn't matter. Just hit it flatter with that same technique. Good. Was it flatter? Yeah. Yes. Also, his grip is pretty extreme towards the backhand, so I might have him move the grip actually a little more towards continental. That'll immediately make it flatter, right? Okay, let's go again. Jeff, if he's righty, can we turn him around the other way or keep him this way? Yeah, I know he's a lefty, but if you teach him a righty, can yes. turn around the other way? He's extreme towards the back end just because I want a more flush in on the ball right now. Good. Now, Shaman, you want to make me change right now. Okay. So he's going to start here, right? And when he starts this move, he's going to, he's got to lead with this arm and try to keep this down. Okay. And there are variations, like my serve is probably like a hybrid. When I take the racket back, I'm like, I'm here pretty early. Sampras is down here. You know, Rod was here. There's variations, um, and so it doesn't mean his his arm doesn't mean his arm has to lag. Okay, it'll just go where it needs to go. But we want you know a certain parameter if we decide to fix this abbreviated surf. Okay, step full. Step nice. weird is more efficient. It, it doesn't mean it's better. But I feel like when you're teaching, well, there's there's two parts to this. People, okay, I could be wrong on this one, and, and 
people think, well, a lot of women on the tour use the pinpoint because they don't have the leg strength, so they need the rhythm to bring it up. And I've, I've worked with WTA players that have commented, I, it just feels like I can get more push when I do that. Well, what I would say is then we gotta get your legs stronger because I think I think that again, it's personal preference, people serve well with both stances. But I think the platform is is more efficient. I think it eliminates one variable where you're not you don't have an extra moving part. But in the case of Serena, she moves her back foot, it's it's obviously in great rhythm, right? Um, I would just wonder if maybe if she went to a platform if it I don't know, but we're not going to change for sure. She's fine. Um, so to answer your question, I think I, I prefer the platform.